In the next step, we're going to be taking the wires from our ESCs and connecting them to the proper paths on the power distribution board. And you'll notice ESC2, 1, ESC4, ESC3. And if you recall before, we scratched numbers on our servo connectors to each of our motors to help us keep them straight. So what we need to do, take our diagonal cutters, also known as our dikes, and we're going to be cutting these wires to length. But before you do that, I want this, this is very, very important. You'll notice on the arms, the slack we have there. Realize that the ESC is going to be in the middle, like that, with these wires curled up a bit because you need that slack there. With the ESC in the middle, that's where the wires need to touch. If you take the slack out, the wires get too short. Make sure you pull that back so you have that slack. And again, you may need to move the shrink tube a bit. Hold down the ESC and then you can cut the wires in the appropriate place. The next step is very important where we're going to connect our power to our ESCs. I have a very important point that I need you to pay attention to because we're going to be using our diagonal cutters, also known as dikes, to cut our power wires to our ESCs. But we need to get this at the right length. Now you see the little curl here, the curl in the uh, the curl in the motors. We want to maintain that so we have a little slack. So we want to make sure that this ESC is pulled back a little bit, so we have this curl. Okay, so while you have that around there in the arm, hold it down. In fact, I'm a righty, so I have to do it this way. Get the ESC in the middle with the shrink wrap right there. Position the red, position the red and the black wire over the pads and give it a little extra slack. And I want you to take your cutters with a flat side and cut it just past the pad, like that. And like that. We don't need these pieces anymore. So we're gonna go around through all of these and do the same thing. We're gonna put the shrink tube over the ESC Pull the ESC back so we have some curl in the motor wires and they are about center there. Put your finger on it. Careful not to cut anything with the wire. You see, you see the control wires? Make sure they're out of the way. Take the red wire, which is going to go to that positive pad. Place it over. Take your dikes with the flat side facing the ESC and cut it off. Do the same for the black. And we're just going to go around all the motors doing that. I'm going to repeat the process. Pull the ESC back so we have a curl. Make sure the shrink tube is over to protect it. Put it in position. Hold it down firmly with your finger. Take the red wire, put it over the positive ESC connection, and cut it with the flat side facing the C a little bit past where you need it. Take the black wire, do the same. You don't want it to be too tight. You want some room to work with. If you have it too tight, you'll have problems. And then you might have to cut the wire, these out of the wire and put a whole new wire on. It's not the end of the world, but you know, you don't want to make trouble for yourself. Pull it back, get the curl, hold it down, put the wire over the pad with a little slack. If you want, you can use your other finger to hold it in place. Take your cutters and snap it off. Again, the black wire. While the ESC is in that place, put it over the ground pad and cut. So now you have all the ESC wires to length to reach the proper parts on the power distribution pad. All right, next step. 
take your wire cutters and some of the scrap wire that you just cut off. See if the gap is right. Ooh, that's not good. I cut too much off because this was set to a prior cut. So in my case, these are adjustable. Your wire cutters may work differently. And I'm just gonna make that gap a little bigger. Test it again. And that's good. Look down the hole. If there's no wires and it's clean, you got a good strip. All right, now again, we're gonna go and take just the tips off. We don't need a lot. Hmm, I think, there we go. Strip off all those ends. This should be getting, this should start to feel like a pattern now. Cut, strip, tin. Cut, strip, tin. I find if you give it a little jiggle, it seems to cut a little better. And you know, you get into the rhythm and it goes pretty fast. Ooh, that one's not cutting well. I think I got this set maybe slightly too big. smaller. There we go. And as always, give them a little twist because frayed wires are never a good thing. So just twist them in your fingers. You like hold one end and twist the wire underneath. See here, this one's really frayed. Pull it out. Give it a twist. We don't, if you have a frayed wire, you can cause a short. So it's really a good idea to keep them nice and tight. Okay. Now we need to tin these again. Now here's a tip of mine. I like to use this silicon pad for, sat, for soldering on. It makes things easier. But in this case, I'm gonna take it and I'm just gonna slide it underneath like that. So I don't spill any solder on my power distribution board. Some people might think this is overkill and maybe it is, but it's something I like to do. All right. So now we're going to start tinning up our wires. Have you ever worked with, with contact cements as a kid? You had to like put it on one paper. And then you had to put the contact cement on the other paper. And then you just press them together and they stick. Well, solder is kind of the same thing in that you're tinning the wires and you're tinning the pads. So they stick together. So that's kind of my metaphor. Take it or leave it. Works for me. Again, I'm taking the and just shove it underneath there just so I don't accidentally burn or spill solder on something I don't want. Just heat it up and let that tin get on there good. You might notice these wires are bigger than the others just like the battery connector and that's because they're they're carrying a lot more voltage because they're carrying the strength of the motor that keeps it spinning. All right. Guess what we're doing next? We're gonna solder our ESCs to our power distribution board. So I wanna repeat, I wanna repeat the ground and the positive connections. You'll notice on ESC3 here, that's the negative ground, and that's the positive, red is positive, black is ground. It's no accident that the positive is on one side and the ground is on the other, and they match up to the ESCs just the same way. 
that was by design. I like to pull these wires out of the way so I don't accidentally work on the wrong pair. I'm going to work on this one starting. It doesn't matter which one you start with. And get that angled in such a way that you can put it right over that pad and apply that heat. And get that good solder point. With this, you'll notice you're going to turn as you do this. There you go. Did you notice how close I was to the standoffs? Be very, very careful or you will melt the standoffs. Again, we're going to take our black, push our red out of the way. Get your wrist oriented the right way. Hold it down, apply your heat until the solder flows and it should just fuse right down there, nice and tight. Take the red, angle it right. Make sure you've got a good angle hold on that because you can see you're doing it not straight on. Apply your heat. And there you go. Sorry, that was a little off camera. I'll do better on this one. Don't even pay attention to where your solder point is. And I have to angle this because of where my hand is. Put the wire on the point. Put the wire on the pad. Add the heat. And let give it a moment for the solder to flow. Oh, I don't think I'm going to get a good contact there. Make sure you've got that flat on the pad. Good contact. Hold that down. I like to put the point a little bit sideways. Give it a little heat. That's good. Last one. Put the heat sideways. Let it flow. Down it goes. Last one. I like to make sure I get the best angle hold on that point. Hold it over the pad. Make sure you get a good view. Apply the heat. And that's it. Congratulations. You've just connected all your ESCs to your power distribution board. That power distribution board is fully loaded and ready for flight now. Let's review what you've accomplished. You built the bottom of your airframe. You mounted your motors. You connected your motors to your electronic speed controllers. You've connected the ESCs to the power distribution board. You routed the wires for the flight control and for the LED lights. You've bundled up all your video wires ready to connect to our video system. And you've got your wire for your flight controller and your power for your battery. You're doing really well. We'll be taking off shortly. You did a great job. Thumbs up. And isn't that looking like a quadcopter now? Next up. The flight controller goes on.